Hi everyone, and welcome to the best podcast ever, where we find worse and worse ways every week to report the podcast. <laughs> yep. Um, for want of a double A battery, here we are on my phone. <laughs> There's not that many people here. I don't think we have to talk to a lot. Uh, well, I mean, starting it, I always kind of start low because it, it very much announces the presence of what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, now now we're just having a normal conversation, and no one's the wiser. Yeah. Because no one will hear this anyway. We can say whatever we want. That's exactly right. I say that all the time, and you're like, don't say that. <laughs> well, yeah, because you go way off the rails. Yes. Uh, yeah. But yes, here we are again at the uh, the diner. Yeah, and there's three of us here, which is almost common. Well, the last it's, few, it's a lot the last more couple common. Of, uh... Well, no, because one episode, was it episode 24 we don't talk about? The episode 24, The Lost Levels. Yeah. Uh, 23 was just the two of you, and 25 was just me and Brian. So. 24 was the warp zone, like, yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. Tw- yeah. 20, 24 will live on forever in our hearts, but not on our YouTube channel. Yeah, no. That would be uh, the level, what, the level 2 and 3 of Mario? Yeah, because you've warped past it. <laughs> yeah, you just go to 4, right? One, once you know how to warp past it, you just don't do those anymore. Yeah. Although you miss a good water level by doing that. Oh, God. I think if I was better at I hate Mario, that. I would probably stay and do all the levels, but considering that I have to go to four and then immediately lose. I four one is hard. I can get yeah. by four. You gotta speed run four one. Yeah, four one is a pain in the ass. Oh, okay. He starts throwing that sun thing at you, man. <laughs> you you have to run through that at full blast. Yeah. And the four castle is annoying too because it's the up The one where you have to yeah. remember which way it is, yeah. Yeah. Well, now that we've had our video game discussion on our slot car podcast, we've already gotten that out of the way, so <laughs> we can we can actually talk about real things now. Yeah, all that crap we bought, I bought. <laughs> <laughs> we, you, you took something off of me. That's how much crap you were compiling tonight. Yeah, uh, definitely. So Kevin has been getting into uh, brass era chassis, and because slot cars apparently follow the same, you know eras of warfare there is a brass era and yeah. essentially it was done by a company called Riggin which is probably the only company most people who will be listening to this will even know about it's the only one that has you could say Tyco because they well Tyco had the Tyco Pro, Pro. Yeah. but that was that had a brass bottom sometimes and that had a steel bottom sometimes that like porcelain looking bot, the black bottom one yeah, yeah. that's steel um, and then there was also Cobramite which is the one you're trying to build which I, I keep telling Kevin, I was telling Kevin all night, it was almost like my job, do not try and build a Cobra Mite <laughs> as a stock Cobra Mite. Because I've been... One. <laughs> and it, yes. Did you even finish yours? Uh, yes, it, it ran terribly. Those little... See, the Dyna Brew, I feel like, coffee. could actually run good. What's that? Can I get a coffee off? Of course. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The Dyna Brew, I feel like there's something there. You know, I'd be like an angle winder rigging. It, it is. There is something there, but on that particular car, the... Gear is literally molded into the hubs. The hub, and it was never good plastic. So you know, for that class, what would that have fit in? Okay, that, so what, that wouldn't have fit in Reagan. Would that have been the scratch? So now let's explain to people what Kevin's talking about. Uh, at NJ Hobby, up until recently, once a year we had what was called the Brass Wars. Brass Wars. And one of the many companies that NJ Hobby started back in the day is we helped a particular person recreate Riggin, and he made a company called Riggin HO, and you had to buy them through NJ Hobby for most of the time. And in order to promote selling these, we essentially had these little packets, and you just got all the parts of a car, and it was individually numbered. Yeah, You had to put those together. Yeah, and that was the first race. Then the second race was Vintage Brass. Right. And Vintage Brass could have been, a, could have been an AFX TCP, right. it could have been a Cobra Mite, a Scratch Mite, a Dyna the Brute. TCP would have been in that class? Yeah. All the work you had to do to that. To yes. Get that? I thought that would be in Scratch. No, um, I mean, you and couldn't... I forgot to ask you, would you like Super Salad? Nah. Ex- extra cheese, extra sauce, even on an upcharge. I'll see. He does it all. He does it before. <laughs> I have the yeah, pictures to prove what uh, I asked. Mr. Pete, you know... I'll, I'll ask you for that. No Even problem. for $5 more. Uh, don't. Would you like me to serve the cakes now or with his dinner? I think you can serve it with the dinner. Yeah. We're, okay. we're here either way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going right, to eat no the problem. farm faster than your dinner. Your, your cakes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we had three races. There was the stock, or stock, air quotes, for uh, Riggin. You had to use the, the parts in the bag. Then there was vintage brass, and then there was brass war. Brass war was a completely open class. 
And that's where the, the land shark used to race. Ah. Land shark is not just an SNL skit, but or somebody... Beer. <laughs> no, or a beer. Or a beer, yeah. Yeah, but they also had a... Uh, what, do you know the guy's name, Kev? Because you were looking at his website the other day. Uh, are we? I thought we were not supposed to say names. No, he owns a company. Uh, his eBay name is Seven Chaparral. <laughs> okay, so go to eBay and look at Seven Chaparral, and you can see uh, he's got land some sharks ones too. They're pretty nice. After yeah, driving well, yours tonight, I kind of want one. <laughs> so he built that specifically to win the Brass Wars, but and he, he sent sells it to them me. Still, yes, he does sell them. That's, that that's why we mentioned his name on eBay. Essentially, what happened is he heard of this race, and I think for um, Scratch the previous year. What I ran and what will run is something called a Rattler. And I don't even know who used to make that. And essentially that's a brass bottom car, custom built, and that's the one that had the direct drive. So there was no gears, it was just two hubs on the side of a motor. Which I'm trying to build also. That is yeah. The build that you're going for, yeah. And it was held together by a piece of two sided tape onto this brass chassis that had a piece of weight. And the theory is, and I'm sure it would run better if I just took the weight out or glued it down, mm. when you're driving the weight shifts to the back and keeps the weight down. And then when you slow down, the weight shifts to the front and keeps the front down. I'm sure that's not what actually happens. <laughs> yeah, that's wishful thing. Wait, do say that again. Okay, so there's a, a, a hanging weight, and when yes. you drive, the weight gets shoved to the back of the car. Oh, and like when you, yeah. similar to the SCX brake setup yeah. and pod. Okay. Yeah. So the idea then is that you're... Well, we debunked that, that, that it was faster fixed than it was right. floating. Because the logic of that then is that you're putting the weight over the drive wheels under acceleration... Not initial acceleration, mind you, but continuing acceleration. Because the, the initial, the initial acceleration is what it takes to move that to the back. It did make a lovely clink noise every yeah, time it did a, that. There though. was such a huge loss of power yeah, delay. Inertia, I, yeah. I, I think it won just because it had such a hot motor that was direct drive. Well, I wish people knew what I built. Uh, you can try and explain it. Remember that there's no photos, but... Well, I sent you a photo, but... Not Basically, I took it. a BSRT spinner motor, which was like a $60 motor at the time, that was custom wound for a lifelike chassis for reasons, and stock magnets. There was a lot of random Not BSRT stuff on the wall that you bought back in the day. But I'm like, ooh, look, an old row car. So I said, can BSRT make a spinner for that? And they're like, sure. So I took that, and I put it in a Tyco can. And it now we, we glued uh, rims to it. And Are you going to use like the rest of the TCP chassis you bought and yeah. try and... Once I figure out how to solder that stuff a lot better than what I was doing. Well, learn how to solder it a lot better, and I, I still say the f I take an AFX car and like cut the back off of it and use the front just for the pickup area. Front wheel drive, direct drive. <laughs> That's oh. not what I told you to do at all. <laughs> oh. Another guy who did you brass monster. cars try had a decent car that um, he did direct drive on. But it had no brake. No, the the Rattler doesn't have brake either. No, but this car had no... Like, you touched it coming out of the corner, and it was in the next straightaway and off the track and yeah. in the wall. This, I found well, something that actually, when you let off, the magnets in this, I'm going to just shave down some polymers so it has immediate brake. One of these days, too, I can rip apart my Auto Art Subaru. That's a 132nd car that That's has two... Got, right? Yes. But that means it has one motor, and it just has a giant shaft in the back. So I could just take that and make a direct drive 132nd car. Because <laughs> I'm never going to run an auto art Subaru. I got it because I like the way the Subaru looks, but that's oh, a Subaru from 10 years ago. Is, uh, is that shaft just the motor shaft? Yep. Unlike uh, the front drive fly, where they were like, we're just going to use a spring. To no, hold they, they custom, weird, though, they had the these motors custom were made, they were ridiculous. The BMWs were terrible. The BMW was terrible, because it, no matter what you did, you could like they didn't okay if you have two shafts if you have two things that are not parallel to each other and you want one to drive the other you need some sort of joint whether it's a universal joint or a cv joint if you want to get fancy what they had was a spring skeletrix <laughs> did the same thing literally it was a coil spring the motor shaft wanted to, was shoved into one end of the coil spring and the prop shaft was shoved into the other side of it and they were like this will work but the oscillation of the spring meant that hardly any motor, any hardly any torque went to the rear. The fly axle. was the well, worst part. Of the fly standing was still. That's as far as it yeah. tested. If you glued it. the bushing in at the back of the shaft, it was good. But every time you would hit it, the spring would allow the thing to shift. Yeah. And using plastic bushings in a plastic chassis, yeah, not good. Are inherently weak. 
yeah. would rip it out every time. And then I if you glue it in, it would break it anyway. Yeah. And then you were really screwed. I don't think we ever accuse Fly of having great engineering ideas. Yeah, we're thinking no. anything through. <laughs> Case in point, that Williams. Yeah. That Thank you. Weird mid shaft. Uh, so, me and Mike have gotten our truly impressive pieces of also cake. Also, a large piece of that's, cake. This that's is a actually a nice piece of cake. Yeah. Kevin was not joking when he said that he would finish the chicken part before we finished our cake. Right. I'm going to dig in. I'm a big fan of cake. Hmm? Well, these two eat, I'm going to go on a huge tangent about cakes right now. I mean, you might as well. I'm, I'm going to have food in my mouth and can't stop That's you. Fine. Cake is bullshit to me. <laughs> because, like, the only pieces, and now I'm pointing at something you can't see here. This is good. That's good. This is good. The rest Get of it away is from shit. my cake. <laughs> I mean, it's like filler. Like when you buy bird seed, it's like the shitty seed. So, so you're saying the icing's cool, you just don't like cake cake. Or ice cream actual... cake. With icing on it. If, if I were to eat cake. Mostly just, there's something called a dark side of the moon cake. What is a dark side of the moon cake? We might as well All go down the chocolate trail. chocolate regular, regular cake, cake reviews. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all dark chocolate. I'm glad we have... Covered like, in dark chocolate with little half-moon chocolates <laughs> on the top. I'm glad there's like eight people who actively watch this show yeah. who have to wait now months between episodes to hear us do this. <laughs> what and more can you ask from a slot car podcast? <laughs> then catchphrases from another show entirely. <laughs> yes. That we tried to lampoon, shot half the footage of, and never recorded any dialogue and gave Did you watch on. the video from this week? I did not. Oh man, you have to see the... <laughs> One scene. Okay, that was turning into regular regular car reviews, reviews, um, reviewing videos we've reviewed before during our own reviews, like, of our own podcast, like the time that my car was seen briefly in an RCR video. <laughs> That's true. That is probably our highest claim to fame. That is. Yeah. It he didn't made sure you were. He made sure I was not. You, yeah. Nearby. He didn't want you. He not. He didn't want you thirsty. <laughs> he made sure he told you where the drinks were. <laughs> That's right. And while I was off. Examining the drinks he videoed. My he car. told me his name at the time, which I was like, "Whoa!" Cool. I mean, I got the so the extra sauce and the. I see the extra cheese. Also, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Enjoy. Thank you. You're this is worthy. Well, now that we have all the food here, Mike, how do I pause this? Well, now that you guys are done with your cake, why don't you talk about your farm? <laughs> well, we'll be right back. We'll everyone. be back. <laughs> And we're back. So I decided to start even though Kevin's not done eating, uh, because this way we could talk about NASCAR and see if we can actually spit out the chicken mid-sentence. Oh, God. <laughs> Before you even start, if we're talking about NASCAR, some guy shared this picture of Steve Park sitting up on the tire barrier to a group. And I posted the video uh, to it. And Benny Parsons' best line probably ever. They're like, how are they going to get that car off the uh, tires? I'm like, I think they're just going to hook to it and just jerk it off. <laughs> if you're nice enough to wait, one second. Yes, so let, let's make sure that they can hear it. No one will see anything right now. <laughs> well, they don't. It's crappy. 90s. Is there a blind Muppet I could put on the screen right now? <laughs> Meanwhile. Well, I can't think just hook to it and just jerk it off. We need but to needless make, like, to say, needless yeah. to say, though, that wasn't the only car to flip over in that race or go into the tire barriers. <laughs> Ken Schrader's wreck was probably even more spectacular, but that was during commercial. Yeah, Sears then, Point was like a. I mean, back in the day when I was still watching as far, Sears Point was like a it was like a like a stunt level that you would unlock in uh, San Francisco Rush. I'm, well, I'm remembering Rush the stunt too. level. What a pointless rhythm Rush. track that is for a road course to be run at with stock cars, yeah. though. Or any. I mean, it has no flow to it at all. Or you could say it, it's only flow. There's no braking zones. Where you, well, there's only the, one braking zone the, where you can really dive into the some stock of car version of it. Yeah, the, the short track has no braking zones at all. But even the the modified long track that uh, that IndyCar runs on, they yeah, got rid of the S's. Out of the horseshoe. They got rid of the S's on the on the back, and it's just a long straight, and then a right left right chicane, or just a right left chicane. So it's just a forced braking zone to create passing. And that was back when they were like, "Oh, tire barriers will stop a car from going into the crowds unless they go over it." But at the best point, let's put tire barriers in the S's, super close to the track. 
Not that's, realizing what happens if a car goes in the wall. Climbs over. The, yeah. No, launches back. Yeah. <laughs> which is what Ricky Rudd did to Ward Burton. That's right. Red flag. Something about having a dusty road course that makes you think that, because that's how Riverside was, too. I mean, they just had everything designed to launch cars back into the, back, <laughs> back onto the track and get plowed. I feel like yeah. a lot of those tracks, like, were definitely designed, and it wasn't for, like, speed or handling prowess, but just danger. <laughs> we, we've designed this to be a, a hazardous... <laughs> You know, Thunderdome for Ooh. cars to skid around. This is just here to punish you for mistakes. Where yeah. Watkins Glen was like totally just made to have massive collisions. <laughs> yeah, Watkins Glen without the chicane and with the boot is just well. Again, I mean, because tall curbs. Even now, even now, the, the boot has like three three feet of grass and that armco. It's like we're gonna slice your car open now. <laughs> yeah, and even those bounce the car back pretty yeah. hard. Like, yeah. uh, who is that? Rudiman. That like head on the wall. Yeah. The rear end that went through the fence a couple years ago <laughs> coming out of uh well where the the dog like should be. Yeah. I was gonna say, how often do people get hurt at NASCAR events because cars are just jumping into stands or parts of cars are jumping into Funny stands? That you say that. We were watching that the other day. Yeah. It happens less than you would think, and it's kinda of funny. I mean I mean, Although when you're so. actually at like a plate track and like the cars wreck in front of you, it is like a holy shit. Like, yeah, we were sitting in a spot where cars <laughs> I, have come I into hope the stands. This cotton net will protect us <laughs> from the thirty-six hundred pound cars that are yeah. tumbling. This like that's dice. clearly designed to stop beer cans. I'm sure we'll stop this car. Like, <laughs> on TV, it's one thing to see the car go up, but like, oh, it went in the crowd a little bit, and then you see the videos people took in the stands oh my God, of the yeah. car coming at them at coming at the fence, yeah. miles an hour, hitting the fence, and. It, an engine sitting in front of them. Yeah. It's not like catching a baseball. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, we used to go to Nazareth and sit in there. Front more, coffee uh, more coffee would be great. I'll have another water. Yeah, I could use a water. Water? Thank you. Thank you. We would sit in the front row at Nazareth when they had... This was before they built the bigger grandstands across from the pits, which they then moved to Watkins Club when they closed it. Um... There were three small grandstands in turn two, and we were sitting in the front row. And my dad would be like, "Don't ever take your eyes off the track because a wheel could take your head off." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." How old were you? Uh, the last time we went, I was ten. Okay, so. I-, I figured it was maybe maybe double yeah. digits. Because it was yeah. Because I mean, <clears throat> it was this era pointing to his shirt, which you can buy in our merch show. Uh, <laughs> did we ever make that animation, or did I just... I guess I just scrolled them. I didn't I actually make the, the animation yet. Yeah. We have to make a sellout animation. Yeah. Buy our shit. <laughs> so we don't have to. <laughs> Which I mean, we're really good at. <laughs> Getting high off our own supply, because <laughs> nobody else wants it. <laughs> yeah, Breaking of, the most important rule of any business. Two of us are wearing the uh, That's an Indie collection. And I was wearing the Tiger shirt yesterday. So. I wore my... Danny buys best stuff shirt. I don't know. I like the uh, the F one or the, I guess we'll call them that's an indie <laughs> shirts better than the Danny buys stuff. Yeah. I feel like this one I don't have to explain. Like I'm gonna I'm about to go down the shore for Memorial Day weekend, right. and people are just gonna go, oh, that's a race car shirt. Yeah. It says 1990 on it because Brian's a bit of a hipster. Right. Like this that's is it. a sports enthusiast. This is, <laughs> this is a step down from being around sci car people who will say that's an indie. Now they'll just say that's a race car. <laughs> <laughs> Um, or, if you're truly unfortunate, that's a NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> somebody did that to you, didn't they? Yes. No, I can see his head. Yeah, but somebody did do that to me. Was that at work, or was it somebody? It was at work. Okay. I had a, a picture that I actually, if I can find the slide, will probably find its way into the shirts. Uh, it was from the uh, Detroit Grand Prix, looking down on the late 80s Bennington that I liked because it was oh. colorful, uh, as it went into the top. I got a, I got a three-minute warning before I got a ditch, so yeah. it's... So, uh, yeah, that was up on my wall, and somebody walked in, and they were like, is that your NASCAR picture? And I'm like, well... It's a Can-Am. I own it, but my dad took the picture, and it's not NASCAR. But anyway, yes, thanks. I, I think we always used to joke, uh, before you met your wife, that you were going to find someone, and they were going to be perfect, and they were going to, like, call an IndyCar NASCAR, and that was just <laughs> going to be the end of it. Yeah, pretty much. So, thanks. Yeah. Uh, well, clearly, out of everyone, I... I'm so sorry. No problem. Because it's felt all the way? Yeah. <laughs> Another hit. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay. 
Nobody saw. <laughs> we also get the check when you get about. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I for those of you listening at home, I do have to uh, drive. We didn't even talk what is about it? the cut attire. <laughs> we did not. I mean, you guys can keep going after I leave. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I suppose we could. Well, that beat in vain. We'll just continue sitting on the same side. That'll make it less weird. Uh, Brian, can you take a picture of us sitting on the same side? I mean, say Brian is not here and BT out our faces. We said it in the podcast. Now you have to do it. No, I have to do it. Now, let me just ignore all these text messages I have of my folks saying don't do it. Now, you can, I can just go like this. <laughs> and write happy birthday over the part of my face you could see. <laughs> Why happy birthday? Because the jukebox is in front of me. Oh. And you're taking the picture. Did we ever explain that joke? Edgar's yes. my birthday was last week. Happy <laughs> birthday. But, uh. Not by Garvey. Anyway. Well, I think that's a logical moment to, to call it. <laughs> what do you guys think? All right, beat and bang, it's gonna cut a tire. Well, yes, we'll get it out there. Kevin cut a tire. Kevin, Kevin was coming off of 78, and all that beating and banging with, against a Ford Focus? <laughs> Fusion. Fusion. Oh, the Focus that was dicking around. <laughs> yeah. You were you were in the Ford Fusion. You know, NASCAR pedigree, obviously, or at least the hood oh, has yeah. one. You know, they're discontinuing it now <laughs> the because of cutting a tire down today. <laughs> you ruined it for everyone. I like that car, too. Well, yeah, Ford is, is apparently only going to make the Mustang and SUVs, and that's going to be their battle plan. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank Have you. Have a good night. You too. Although the funny thing about that is that they will, I'm sure, continue to make the Focus and Fiesta and Mondeo. No, they, they which killed the f- uh, Focus, too. For, for the U.S. market, but that's what I'm saying. They're oh. going to continue, I assume, because the... The uh, fusion is the Mondeo in other countries. No um, like they're not going to stop making those, no. so they're just going to stop selling them. Well, just because they have one douche bag, they should, and not. Hey, I there's should, nothing. I should inform, cause... <laughs> there's nothing worse than feeling a front wheel drive car start to get loose on you. I I know that feeling very well. I got my I've car when I was 18, and I have done everything stupid you can do with a car. I have done. Yeah. I've lost brakes many times. I've never had a tire problem. Yeah, I have had that feeling though because I had a broken shock on my uh, on my Passat. That's a different feeling. <laughs> broken right rear shock. So I was getting some trailing do- trailing throttle oversteer with front wheel drive, which was very exciting. Yeah. It, <laughs> well, never broke a trailing arm. On well, if we're not back next week, guys, you know what happened. We, all we, of our we all died. In we all died. Yeah. Someone else blew a tire. <laughs> Oh, there goes the tire. Well, my tires have never blown. It was always um, my my horrible, horrible OEM rims, Mm -hmm. bending themselves into the letter D. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I was driving far enough on the rim to mess that rim up at all. My dad's curbed it enough times. (laughs) Yeah, but you were there last, so clearly it's all your fault. Well, your dad's curbed it enough times that it's learned how to stand up for itself. I couldn't give the tires that I bought for my Mazda I never put on yet. I could just give them those two. Like, hey... Now it's your chance to put these on. <laughs> well, I guess at this point I will throw in one more plug for the shirts because it is Memorial Day weekend, which you don't know because you're hearing this much later. But <laughs> <coughs> it is the official weekend of the home weekend of IndyCar racing. So buy the bets and Indy shirts and argue with your friends about the cart Indy split of '96. Yeah, just buy our we buy our do, stuff, folks. <laughs> oh wow, we could I could bore everybody with that. We could do a second one. Dear, dear God, stop the recording. Stop. No, don't. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the long-awaited <laughs> second entry in the uh, Office Hours essay series. <laughs> if there's anything you know less popular than the podcast, Mike. Mm. Well, Mike and me could sit in the text, and then we could have that, like, Microsoft Sam guy read the text <laughs> and do a podcast. How do, I, how, do I, how do I solve the problem? How do I? There we go. Okay. Goodbye, everyone.